The scene of the gross crime. Probably a coyote. Caught a cross. There is a lot of droppings along this path right here. That's a side cover. Come back over to here. Lots and lots of side cover. There's a junction of sorts right here and there's big piles of turds all over. Built a big brush pile here. Cut a lane through all this brush and tag elders, balsam fir. This is a licking branch that I installed. It's very low to the ground. Almost knee high on me. Curls around. And I got it tied on this branch, which is supported by that branch, which is supported by that branch. <laughs> and when I saw a spike buck rubbing on it this last season, the, whole, the entire tree, this lower tree was shaking around. I think they like that. I didn't do much scraping. Right there's the tree I sat in. About 15 yards to here. There's a bear's den that I built with an excavator. I put some bark in front of that hole last year and it was gone in the fall. So I thought something crawled up in there but I wasn't brave enough to look inside. There's holes all over in this ground, you see that? I think that's skunks digging up grubs. It's okay, break apart this side a little bit. Production path through this marsh, little marshy area, being well used. Cattails. Tag alders, willows, balsam poplars, all coming up in here. All this, these are all very old tag alders here. I cut them all off, cut them all down right to the ground. Now we've got a lot of shoots, more shoots in that area than what there was. A lot more cover near the ground. Of course, we like cattails. Hopefully, this all grows in real thick. Right in here too. I don't know why no tag elders that come up here, but if they do, I'll keep cutting them down and let let the cattails get going. Old pile of cedar bolts. Sooner or later, I'll get at them. Now that I got a little mini backhoe, I can put some more fence posts in. Here is an oak. I planted the acorn in the year 2000. It's at least 15 feet high. So it's a tree that's behind my shop, and I think it's a bur oak. And it sure does look got have that bark characteristic on the branches. Small acorns. I put a wire around it because I didn't want the bucks grabbing his antlers on it. It's been working. Over here I planted a companion. This is a, a burr white oak cross. Planted it like five years ago, that's all the bigger it is. That's what they do, they hardly grow in the beginning, four or five years and then they start to go. A balsam fir that's down for the count. I want to make a cut on it, I don't want to cut it down, I'm going to cut it so that the wind will blow it down. I want to blow it over here to this swale. And I'm going to cut, up, cut it up into segments and put it over the top of the swale and that will help to reduce evaporation for a little bit in the spring. So I saw what am I going to do with this field, what am I going to do? Now the top part I've been cutting with a 
with a string mower and doing experiments with having deer eat the canary grass in the, in the fall. But now we're getting a lot of cedar shoots. That's probably just as good as clover. That'll bring the deer in. You can see how it's disfigured. The deer are already eating on it. This whole area right in here is all covered in So I'm not going to cut this. I'm going to leave them grow and that'd be food for the deer. Right there you're looking at a Swiss stone pine. I think I planted eight, maybe nine years ago now. It's all the bigger it is. Say 40 to 50 years before you get a production of pine nuts, but in this godforsaken soil, it'll probably take a hundred. Somebody down the line will say, oh, I'm sure glad that guy planted those trees here. So this is my novel solution to keep that two by three inch wire fence up is to put up a rail fence and attach it to that instead of having to dig fence posts. And this enclosure here has crab apples, hazelnuts, plums, two Swiss stone pines, I already pointed one out. And I did plant one more fruit or berry tree or something, I can't remember. There's the other Swiss stone pine right there. But I wrecked this quite some years ago and it's holding up really nice. I saw whenever I take it down I can use the poles for firewood. I just planted a nanny berry right here. I've seen them growing in some very wet conditions so I put it pretty close to this little pond. Planted mountain ash right in here. I put two in the same hole. I've had a lot of them die so hopefully one of them lives. That big buck is still hanging around here. He's sinking in real deep too. That's good, put on a few more pounds. You know, I'd like it so that I can't even fit you in the freezer. <laughs> Some damage I noticed. All the shoots here have been grazed off by a bull. It looks like an apple, crab apple. So I should cut that off today. If I don't cut it off, I think the whole plant dies, but if I cut it off right by the ground, it'll send up new shoots. Here's some dehydrated aronia. Look at that. I'm going to eat them. No, looks more there. Some more here. I'll save them for the next time. Still got a little sweetness to them. Dug this in 2013. It was just a hole in the clay. And although the frogs started using it right away, it looked pretty barren. Now it's a frog factory. And all these cattails serve as cover for them. The deer topped off this hazelnut. Nuts to attract squirrels and browse to attract deer. I'll bet the deer eat the nuts too. Why not? There's a hazelnut here, there's one there, one here, one in that cage, one in that cage. You can see the catkins. Ooh, look at all the catkins. So these guys, some of them might have some nuts on them. Yeah, they're spent. This is going to be a hazelnut thicket here, but along this swale mound, they grew very quickly. They look very strong. This is the strongest one right here. These are all just little bits of things. I planted them all at the same time. Little bits of things right here. So you can see the swale in the swale mound here. Okay. And that's on the lower edge of the swale mound, on that trough. It kind of dips before it comes up again. I planted them there and 
these ones here on the end grew very quickly. So this one's up on the mountain a little bit. It's grown slower. And then these, they're down here in just the, this was just like subsoil clay. So they're, they're, not, they're not even close. Not dick, they're showing signs of life. They're not bad. At least those two, there's a third one that's not bad. Well then we get into some that are very small. I planted like 20 or 25 in here. Probably 25 because you get them 25 in a batch. I think these came from Cold Stream Farm. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of them are alive. Not too bad. And well, there might be some other ones down in here too. There might be something else. That one's dead. This actually does look pretty good. Healthy. This is an elderberry and I planted a lot of them and they just don't seem to want to live here. And there's a aronia. I planted an aronia and a Chinese cherry in here and the aronia is alive. This is aronia right here that's starting to leaf out. Chinese cherry is dead. There's another pond that I had dug. It's just a hole in the subsoil clay. And I put a bunch of fingers to it. Edge is where the most life lives. That's the idea. Around it I planted aronia and Chinese cherries. And right here that one's dead. The aronia is alive. It's right here. Here. Barely. Just a little tiny. Look at how the cattail seeds blew up against the shoreline. Of course that's where the best place is to sprout. Right on the edge. But soon this is just going to be loaded with cattail. This was a uh, dug baby. Three years after that first hole I dug over there that's filled with cattails. So maybe another three years this will be totally full and that's what I want. Diversity on the landscape. Turkish hazelnut. I planted 25 of those and there's, I don't even think there's three, maybe four of them that are alive. Here's one of those Chinese cherries that's alive right here. Kokusa or something. And then I got a aronia next to it. The aronias. This one's doing very well. Planted on one of these fingers here. I don't think there's anything alive in here. We'll wait for a little bit and then we'll find something else to put that cage on. That aronia is doing real very well. It's got nice spuds on it. Corsacusa, that's where the Chinese thing is. Okay, it's still alive. It's shooting up way down below. The main stem is dead, but it's coming back up out of the roots. So that's a tour of my fingered pond. Pretty oak. When I bought it back in the year 2000, could have been 99. About 300 of them. Little tiny one year old seedlings. And I bought 300 tubes and I tubed them all up. And the advertising said they'll grow 10 feet a year and have nuts every year starting in year three. Well, 23 years later, we do have it. I'm over my head now. It's probably over 10 feet, pretty close if it's not. Don't believe everything you read. Well, this might be 
one of the tallest American hazelnuts on the property and it is loaded with blossoms. The question is, can I make that lighter? Let's see if I can. I mean this whole branch is just all the way up the line. It's got blossoms on it. There is one over here that's got cat can, so maybe that pollen got over there. This one has flowers on it too. Hopefully they pollinated each other. There's other smaller ones in here, but they're not. These two, this is the first time I saw any of them in, that are planted in here blossom. There's one. In that cage. Now look at this little one's got catkins. Hmm. So those two. I think I planted 50 American hazelnuts in here, and there aren't very many alive. Eight, maybe. This is tough grown. You see berries that are still hanging on. Here it's April. Yeah. That's a sea berry hanging on since April. Oh. I should see if I can get this cage off away from this apple tree now. There's a lot of them growing through it, so it might be tough. What's going to happen is if I don't get it out now, it's going to become weak on the bottom because it's supported on the bottom. I got to get it off. This thing is kind of supporting it a little bit too, so maybe I'll get a larger one so it goes around because if I don't have that hardware cloth there, the voles will just girdle that to nothing. I actually grafted this way down by the ground, and the graft failed, so that's why it sent up a bunch of shoots. And it's got red inside the bark, you know, in the wood. The wood itself is red, so I thought, well, I'm going to let it go. Oh, there's a little bug right there. He almost got on my finger. I don't know what that is. Just saw a carter snake. Under here. <laughs> Must be a hole here somewhere you could get under. Oh, there he is right there. This is a box elder. Deer really like to munch on this baby. Yeah. I just slipped these reeds from that bed over into the path. Now you can see all the garlic. I also had chicken wire over the top to keep the squirrels from digging them up. I'm gonna get that off here too. See where some of them were covered up too much with the reeds? Now they're going to be able to get some sunlight, get moving. Not bad here. Not bad here. I'm probably growing way more garlic than I should eat. Densely planted garlic patch. So we're here at camp. 
supposed to rain tomorrow, so I came and planted seeds. And this bed is planted all the way until you see the reeds up in the background there. There's five or six, six different seeds I planted in there. There's some elephant garlic coming up. And there, there's some there, there's some right here. I should transplant these peaches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. There's peach pits and crab apple seeds. Some other things in here too. I uh, threw like five or six different tree and bush seeds in here. See if they come up. Here's another one that I planted with I think five different seeds. Same thing with this. garlic coming up in there. And here's a bit of the upper Michigan commercial grade garlic and I just planted three different types of seeds in with them. Salsify, parsnips, and radishes. Assuming something doesn't eat the radishes, I should have radishes in a month or so. And then the salsify and the, and the parsnips are late season. I'll have harvested the garlic before that, before the, the last two. Yeah, I planted the garlic quite far apart. 10, 12 inches in some, some cases here. Because I wanted to have a mixture of plants in this bed. Here's my grandma's onions. This is the patch that furnishes the, the bills that I plant at the house for the last quite a few summers, or winters I should say. The bills that this patch produces I bring home and plant late fall right before freeze up and I harvest them right now up until the end of May then they get to be pretty tough and bitter here's a bit of elephant garlic that I densely planted I just put some salsa in with it nothing else and here's elephant garlic that I planted sparingly What's the opposite of dense? Sparsely. Sparsely planted elephant garlic. These are garlics that I had to pull out. These are garlics that I had to pull out to plant seeds. And I put them on this barrel lid because it's got a groove. It's supposed to rain, start raining pretty soon. And then I'll swish them around tomorrow in the water and eat them for breakfast. Probably not all of them, but yeah, maybe all of them. I'll try. Why not? Is a deer. Definitely has to know I'm here because I made enough noise.
There's grasses growing over there. 